It's a good question, right? It's a question I think a lot of us ask. Do you really need an iPad? And I think a lot of people don't actually need an iPad, but we want an iPad. We want this iPad experience. And even if we can't really distill down the reason why, maybe it's just that we want a bigger phone. And I think that ultimately is what I've been striving and looking for with an iPad. And I will fight myself constantly with my M1 iPad Pro and any iPad I've used in the past to try and replace a laptop or a computer. But it's very clear that Apple wants the iPad to be its own specific thing. It's for a very specific niche of creators that do drawing, they can do writing on it, they can do stuff that isn't super task intensive in terms of like video editing. I think still you're gonna wanna move to a desktop or a laptop, but the iPad is still something as a consumption device is honestly perfect. But the issue has been most iPads are too big. The M1 iPad Pro, for example, the 12.9 is a massive baking tray slab. And then even the 11 inch iPad Pro is great. I think it's also a nice size, but it also sits in a category where it's almost like a netbook size. It's still a little bit too big for a lot of people as something that you just want to bang around on the couch with or sit in bed with or read with. There's a reason why Kindle e-readers are not 11 inches or 12 inches, right? They are small. There's something you just want to kind of hold like a book. I actually had the original iPad mini when it first came out and I loved it. I used to edit photos on it. I used to do everything with that thing. And then unfortunately I lost it. So I just haven't really ever replaced it because once the iPad Pro came out and we got that sort of bezel-less display look, I was like, I can't buy another device with chunky bezels. And so even though there's that 329 iPad, which I know might be tempting for a lot of you, personally speaking, once you have an iPhone of the last two years or so, or three years, you really don't wanna go back to a home button. You really don't want that chin and that forehead. It just, to me, feels like an ancient dated piece of tech, even if it has new internals. Whereas with this iPad mini, it feels modern, it feels new, and I really think it's the perfect size. So if you are someone who's sitting there and you see everyone talking about iPads and you're like, I, I need an iPad, I should have an iPad in my life. You know, this is something that I want now. I'm doing well, I wanna spend some money. Like every time I see somebody who's life together or is at peace in life, they have an iPad. And I think this iPad is designed for you. It's designed for a person who doesn't really need an iPad, but they want an iPad and it's gonna give you the full iPad experience. I actually think this thing is overpowered for its size. I think it's doing way more than it needs to, much like every iPad, like the M1 iPad, why the hell does that thing have an M1 chip? There's just really not much you can do with it to stress test that iPad yet. And the same thing goes for the A15 in this iPad mini. And I think it's totally fine that it has a little bit of a dated display too. We're not getting like a mini LED XDR in here. It's only 60 Hertz. There's no pro motion, but because of that screen size, even bouncing back and forth between my iPhone 13 pro and the iPad mini, I'm not noticing a slowdown. The UI doesn't feel clunky. It doesn't feel choppy in any way. It's still a really, really nice display. And maybe that has to do with the size. I know Dave 2D said the same thing at this size. You really don't need anything more than 60 hertz. So I think they made the right call there and it's probably for price reasons more than anything. I'm sure iPad mini 2 will get ProMotion. And you know, at some point it almost feels like the iPad mini is becoming a smaller iPad Pro in a way, especially given how powerful it is. But mostly it is just a really, really nice consumption device. It's that device you really wanna use when you gotta go to the toilet, you're sitting on the couch, you're sitting in bed, you go to the park, you go grab a coffee. It's small enough that you can kind of put it in a jacket pocket or you can even put it in your breast pocket of your shirt or something like that. You know, even check your email, read the news, all that kind of stuff. It's just a nice little iPad that you can bring with you anywhere. And at home, it's a big enough display that you don't feel like you're straining staring at your phone. So ultimately, it's like the best TikTok device, if that makes sense. If that puts it in a better scenario, it's the best way to watch TikToks in bed. It's the best way to watch Netflix on the toilet. It's the best way to read tweets in the morning with your coffee. Whereas when I use something like the M1 iPad Pro, I use it like a laptop, even though it can't really do laptop things on it. I sit there like I'm sitting at the computer. I don't feel mobile with that iPad, whereas I actually do feel mobile with the iPad mini. And that to me is a very strong indicator that I'm going to use this iPad way more than I've used any other iPad in the past. And it still might be hard to understand. You're probably still thinking like, well, I'll just use my phone. But your phone is small. Like really, once you have the iPad and you have a phone, you realize how small the phone actually is. Everything is perspective, right? When you use an M1 iPad Pro for a while and you pick up an iPhone, it feels absolutely tiny. But then if you pick up your iPhone for a while, you're like, oh, this is perfect. And then you pick up the iPad mini, you're like, oh my God, this is so much bigger. So perspective matters here. And I think it's something you really have to have in hand. So I would recommend even just like going to the store to test it out before you actually purchase it to make sure it's something you feel comfortable with. But speaking from experience of having really big iPads, small phones, and now this iPad mini, 
it is the absolute sweet spot. Now, everything is not totally positive. There's a lot of weird quirks with this iPad. And my buddy Greg did a video talking about how this iPad mini is weird. And most of my complaints with it have to do with iPad OS. It just seems like they rushed iPad OS with this form factor and never really worked out the bugs and clearly didn't let developers know or something that this size was coming. Apps really feel weird on it. Like even on TikTok, there's two black bars, like full screen doesn't really happen. It feels sometimes like iPhone apps expanded, even though they are actually iPad apps. So padding is all over the place. Touch targets are super strange and weird. You can have the dock filled with like 15 apps or 20 apps or whatever, and it just doesn't really make sense. So I think iPad OS needs a bit of an overhaul for this form factor. And even stuff like iMessage, there's just a lot of wasted UI space with this form factor right now. But I'm hopeful they'll see feedback from all of us and realize, okay, we gotta do like an iPad OS version for the iPad mini form factor. It's not really a one size fits all with the UI. So. Those quirks aside, I think everything else is pretty much golden. Aside from Touch ID too, Touch ID is nice, I like it. I am missing Face ID a little bit though. Like honestly, when I'm sitting there and I gotta press that top button to unlock it, you know, I've had this thing for almost a week now and I'm still sitting there like forgetting that I can't use Face ID. I gotta put my finger on top to unlock this stupid thing. Is it a huge deal? No, but at this price point, which we'll talk about in a second, I feel like Face ID should be an option on it and I hope maybe in the next version they do bring Face ID, but for now, I love this form factor so much that I'm actually okay to be Gen 1 with it. And even if there is an update with Face ID, I wouldn't buy it just for Face ID. But we just mentioned price a little bit, and I think that this thing is just a smidge overpriced. I know it's $4.99, but I really think it should be like $3.99 or $4.29 for the base 64 gig. Look, I know they have that 329 iPad, but like I said, I feel like that thing is ancient technology, and I just... For me personally, I don't want something with that forehead, with that chin, with the home button. It just feels like I went back in time. I'm too used to the modern design language of Apple for me to go back to that old school iPhone 5 kind of vibes, right? But the price is, it's kind of rough. You know, 600 bucks, 500 bucks for base 64 gig storage. I don't think storage is really a major issue with this iPad. I don't expect many people to be doing a whole lot of heavy file work with this iPad. It's really a consumption device. So unless you're someone who downloads a lot for offline viewing, you really won't run into a roadblock with the 64 gig, but you know everyone seems to complain about 64 gig, so I'm gonna mention it. It sucks that it's 64 gig. It'd be nice to have a base of 128, especially at that price point, but hey, it is what it is. This is one of those Apple things where they say, you know, it's 64 gig and this is how much it costs, and we all still line up for it, right? So ultimately, overall, I am really enjoying this iPad. I just think it is that perfect size. It's the one that I'm gonna be using most often, I think, and I'm honestly contemplating getting rid of my M1 iPad Pro because it's just overpowerful. It's way too heavy. I do love that Magic Keyboard and I like the way it feels, but you know, maybe one day they'll make a Magic Keyboard for the Mini and we'll just have this tiny little computer that we can bring around with us. But for now, I am seriously enjoying it as my TikTok viewing machine, my toilet computer, my toilet phone. It's my big phone at home because I have a little phone when I'm out and about throughout my day. So I hope this helps you. It's the iPad for people that don't know if they need an iPad or not. You will have a great time with it. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Because again, if you enjoy your iPhone, consider it your iPhone, just a little bit bigger. But that brings us to outro time and I'm looking across here and I can actually see some of my cassettes and I'm gonna grab a quick cassette here. Give me one second. Oh, I'm back. Oh, am I in focus? No, I don't give a shit, all right. All right, here I have a cassette called Cosmos. It's not called Cosmos. This is the soundtrack for the original Carl Sagan Cosmos show. We're about to begin a journey through the cosmos. What's so fucking cool about this cassette is Vangelis is on it, and Vangelis did the soundtrack and score for the original Blade Runner. So if you're into the, a lot of the music that I use in my videos by Makeup and Vanity Set, Vangelis is like the original Makeup and Vanity Set, and he did a lot of music for Carl Sagan's Cosmos show. This was a killer find when I found it, literally in a bin at a thrift store. I listen to it all the time. Very, very cool. Check out Vangelis, of course, Check out Makeup and Vanity Set. I'm gonna throw that on the couch there. But otherwise, my name is Patrick Tomasso. I hope you like this video. Let me know if you have questions or comments about the iPad mini, the perfect toilet phone. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll see me or hear me next time I feel like making a video.